Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks, Andrews, for the introduction. Um, I would like to talk about um, what we have released on Gen5 uh, to make it easier uh, for, for early stage researchers to, to learn about Gen5 and also to help the professional users to, to use our models uh, in their research. Can I ask you how many of you are uh, absolutely new to Gen5? Okay, just a couple. So the rest are professional Gen5 users? Good. Um, I would like to talk about research enablement, uh, what we mean by that, and then um, our first project uh, on uh, research enablement is what we released uh, on Gen5 on system modeling. So um, by research enablement, uh, we, um, we call it mass research enablement because we would like to provide uh, lightweight uh, processes uh, for, to, to access RMIP. And we would like to uh, entice ARM-affiliated uh, research activities at universities worldwide. And through that, we would like to identify opportunities for, for further collaborations with researchers or with specific universities. Um, um, during the process, uh, we would develop research starter kits and services. And the first one, as I said, was on system modeling. Um, uh, I'll talk about that. Um, this way, we would like to increase efficiency. Um, we still have our one-to-one -one relationships with universities or research groups, uh, but instead of uh, focusing on uh, increasing the number of those one-to-one -one relationships, we introduced this concept of uh, what we call a one-to-many relationship that uh, we would like to provide um, basis for, for the universities to start the uh, research in different areas, and then um, uh, we would like to be as open as possible so that the universities um, can, uh, can start the uh, research and then uh, it would be mutually uh, beneficial for both of us. Um, the what do we mean by uh, research starter kits? These are equivalent of uh, education kits in research. Uh, we have the ARM University program, which provides uh, education kits and materials to universities and uh, for undergrad courses. And the research starter kits or research enablement kits are uh, the next step for researchers and postgrad students. Uh, by that we mean we uh, provide software packages, models, tools, and hardware prototypes to universities and um, uh, to enable them to use ARM and partner-based technologies in their research. The areas of focus are, uh, we, we start from the very uh, low-level uh, SOC design and subsystem, FPGA prototyping, then we have simulation modeling, which is the, the one that I will uh, talk about. Uh, we will also focus on networking, IoT, and cloud computing. And at the end, uh, data science and machine learning. The, the first three uh, are in the development phase. Now, the, the simulation modeling is uh, released, and the other two are uh, in the development uh, phase. So what is our uh, starter kit on uh, system modeling? Um, First of all, uh, you can go to this website, uh, arm.com research enablement, that um, introduces our research enablement activities, and then um, slash system modeling, which is uh, covering the, uh, the topics here. Um, what we have covered is, first of all, introduction to Gen5 very uh, briefly, and uh, then uh, we, um, in the document, we tell you how to use this research starter keys, what are the system requirements, and how you can download and uh, build uh, Gem5 and uh, the uh, supporting materials uh, that we are providing. Uh, simulating ARM in Gem5, we cover both models, uh, system emulation and uh, full system. And then we talk about Gem5 statistics, how we can um, um, read the statistics and analyze them. Uh, in our um, starter kits, we also provide um, something unique for professional users. In this case, we are providing a high performance in order uh, CPU model, timing model. This is the first time that ARM is releasing an uh, ARM V8A based um, uh, processor model, and uh, this could be uh, very interesting to professional users. It's, uh, as I said, it's an older CPU model in Gen 5. Um, we uh, cover memory accesses, different memory accesses, and based on that, 
we introduced, uh, we actually focus on atomic CPU model, timing CPU models, and minor CPU. And based on the uh, um, minor CPU, we, we have developed the, um, the HPI model, and uh, which is uh, which uses the minor CPU as base, and then um, adds some uh, timing information uh, to be uh, a good representative of an ARM V8A architecture. Um, then we have uh, benchmarks. We cover, as I said, both uh, SE and uh, full system uh, simulation mode. In the SE mode, uh, we use a very simple benchmark, uh, single source workloads from the LLVM test suite just to uh, show how it works. Uh, on the FS mode, we use Parsec 3, uh, which is the uh, benchmark suite that is used by uh, Gen 5 users and is introduced uh, in the Gen 5 uh, wiki as well. Um, we show how to compile this on uh, uh, using different approaches. One is uh, cross-compiling uh, uh, on an um, x86 machine. The other one is compiling uh, using uh, QMU. And um, most people uh, prefer to have an emulator uh, for, for compiling the benchmarks, so we cover both. In terms of... Um, Compiling, we need to change the disk image, as you know, and uh, we also cover that part, how to expand your disk image, how to copy the files and then uh, compile it in another machine. Then for the running of the FS benchmarks, we develop uh, some uh, uh, run script, uh, uh, as uh, the, you saw in the previous um, presentation, some um, benchmark run script that uh, would help you to, to run your FS benchmark. So this is the model that we are uh, uh, providing with the, with the starter kit. You can see that uh, when creating the model, we, we use uh, the uh, HPI branch predictor, um, the, the ICB and uh, DTB, the watt cache, which is part of the TLB, and uh, we have level one caches, level two caches, and the, the core itself. Um, so the processor pipeline is uh, similar to minor CPU. You can see that there are four stages, uh, fetch one, fetch two, they could and execute. And then uh, the, we have, as I said, the branch prediction, uh, branch prediction and the, the functional units. Um, at the cache level, uh, we have the HPI prefetcher, and we have uh, L1 and L2 caches. And um, we describe the, uh, the, the overview of the, the model and then the parameters that uh, we use for, for the development of that. So uh, we have pushed some of the uh, materials to the official Gen5 repository, and I will go through the list. And then there is another, there are supporting materials that, um, for, for simulation scripts and um, uh, the, the benchmarks that are uh, pushed to our own uh, GitHub repository. I'll, I'll go through that list as well. So the base uh, one is the HPI core um, that is um, that is pushed to the Gen5 official repository. It is available under the config common cores arm. And then we have developed uh, uh, both SE and FS simulation scripts to make it easier to um, set the uh, simulation parameters and, and um, do the simulation on ARM. You can, um, again, uh, similar to what Gen5 is uh, providing, you can choose the CPU type. In this case, it will be between atomic, minor, and HPI. You can change the CPU frequency, number of cores, uh, memory information, um, the command to run on the uh, SE mode. And uh, again, this is available under the example ARM starter SE. This FS simulation uh, script is similar to that one, but for uh, the um, FS mode, uh, there are uh, extra parameters, kernel, uh, disk image, etc. You can um, set those uh, parameters as well. And again, more information can be found on our website. In terms of the supporting the docu uh, documents and materials uh, that we push to our uh, own Git repository, um, there's a 30-page document um, that describes uh, what I just said uh, about the Gen5 basics, the, the, the HPI model, and the benchmarks. 
There's a clone script which just simply uh, clones uh, this repository itself and the uh, Gen5 official repository and creates the folders based on um, what uh, is described in the document. There is the um, Gen5 uh, RSK wiki on that uh, Git repository, which is a cheat sheet basically, and it contains all the code and examples provided in the documentation. If you would like to try things out um, quickly, you can use the cheat sheet. Uh, we have some patches for the Parsec. Uh, the Parsec, um, the, the basic one that you get, uh, the basic patches that you get are not compatible with RV8A. So you can use these patches to, to make it uh, compatible uh, for, for uh, our HPI model. And uh, at the end, we have some uh, supporting scripts, simple scripts to read the Gen5 statistics, um, scripts for creating run scripts for, uh, for Parsec benchmark, etc. Okay, um, that's it.